Hey man, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, I've got a couple different moisture meters. I want to see if there's a difference between the two. I wasn't getting real accurate readings with this air kill one. I'm about to burn, you know, my last fire of the of the season here and was wondering if I can burn up some of this stuff from the most recent splittings and uh, and I've got some wood that was dead on the tree. I've got someone that was live on the tree that I split about a month and a half ago or so. I've got some that was live that I split uh, several months ago and I've got some that I just got done splitting and I want to try these two different meters side by side to see which one is going to be the better moisture meter. Welcome to man time. Well, I'm out here on the porch of my barn dominium, and um, I wanted to go through both of these moisture meters. Now, the first one here is the like the cheapest one I could find that actually looked decent. Uh, this one is an Eric Hill. Now, the last time that I had um, used it, it was not reliable and not accurate. Um, just going, you know, off of uh, common knowledge, you know, oak does not cure and dry in the matter of months, you know, after you split it. So, um, yeah, I was having my doubts. So I went and spent double the amount of money on this general brand uh, one. And I've always had good luck with general. Uh, general used to be one of the last holdout, like, made in USA brands. Um, they, this is not made in the USA. Neither of these are uh, both made in China. But the first difference that I'm seeing right off the bat, these uh, prongs on this general, I guess it's just called general. Um, I think it used to be general tool or something. Now it's, uh, now it's just general. Let me find a spot for all this stuff. All right, well, let's, uh, let's start off with a test piece. Now the test piece that I'm gonna be going with here is gonna be this big piece of burl that I just split yesterday. So this, by all rights, should be very, very wet. Now again, here, it's saying it's 73. The high today is like 60. Um, so there's no way that it's 73. Yeah, it just went up to 74. I mean, there's no way that's accurate. Uh, this one doesn't have a temperature setting, so um, no temperature comparison there. But this one has accuracy plus or minus 2%. I think this one has the same thing. Um, yeah, so I'm just going with, there, there's like five different settings on here. Resolution 0.1%. Okay. Anyways, we're at 0%. We're on setting M1, and it goes from like M1 to M5 for different, but they're all pretty much the same. Anyways, let's dig in here to this burl wood. All right, burl wood, I'm getting 27% on this Eric Hill. 27%. Freshly split uh, from green wood. Now let's try. All right, getting 28% on the general. So, uh, first comparison, um, good. First comparison, good. Yeah, 28%. 28%, 27%. So on the, on the fresh piece, we're both getting, you know, we're getting the same reading. All right, now I have this older piece of burl wood that I split maybe two or so months ago. Let's try out the Eric Hill. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting 10% on the Eric Hill. And these prongs are a lot fatter. Um, the general also had an additional set of prongs in the box. So, same piece, let's see what we get here. Right at 16, 16% on, uh, on this one. Hmm. And it does feel dry. You know, it does feel light and dry. So um, that one may have come off of a dead piece. Now right here, right here I've got a couple rounds off of a smaller piece. Um, this might have been, you know, six, seven inches round. Let's try this one. 15 and a half, 
good. Yeah, getting 10% on the Eric Hill. So that, you know, that's kind of the main difference, what I was seeing. The Eric Hill was measuring the, uh, the moisture very low as compared to what I thought it should have been. Now this one is still a fa fairly heavy piece. This is all red oak. Um, so let's start off with the Eric Hill on this piece. Really dig it in there. I'm getting 13, 13%. And on the general, I was getting 18 and a half, 19 percent. Um, and, and this one has a beeping if it thinks that the moisture content is too high. I don't know if you can set that some other way. All it has is the mode button. All it does is go from wood to building. So if you're checking like the walls of your house or something, if you suspect mold or moisture, um, and then it's got a hold button. So very simple to operate. Just basically turn it on and stick it in. The low, medium, and high ranges are kind of odd, um, where it's telling me that the wood is too wet at 15%, uh, above 15%. Anyways, let's try another stick here. Um, this one here is very dry. This was dead, and it's got like bugs in it and stuff like that. And uh, so it's been split, but it was dead, you know, before, yeah, 6, 17. 17% and with the Eric Hill 12.3 so again I don't know like starting off there it was it was looking fairly good um, but I think the prong I, I don't know it, it may be just a faulty meter um, I saw where other people had the same meter and were getting fairly they were giving pretty good reviews on it all right, here's a piece right down here. I got 13 on the Eric Hill, on the General, 18. So, yeah, I'm, uh, so some of this wood is actually okay to burn according to the General. It's all okay to burn according to the Eric Hill. So, um, just word to the wise there, you may want to invest in a little bit better moisture meter if that's going to be critical for like your home use, um, especially if you've got like a fireplace or something where that creosote can really catch the walls on it, uh, or something where you're burning at a lower temperature, you know, your wood stove in your, um, in your like living room or in your house or something where you're, you're constantly burning at kind of a lower temperature, letting it go overnight, cool down. Um, moisture in the wood is what causes that creosote buildup and ultimately a fire. So, the type of moisture meter you have is uh, is something to invest in, and um, I'm glad I invested double the money in this much better, both in construction, spare parts, uh, the prongs are much thinner uh, and replaceable, and everything else. So I think I made a good investment there to protect against chimney fires. You know, that's something you really don't want to cheap out on. And I, I just thought, you know, one moisture meter was as good as another, and so it really didn't matter. But there you go. Uh, so my pick for a good moisture meter at this point is this General. It seems like it is good and accurate, and this Eric Hill definitely stay away from. So that's going to do it for today on Man Time. Get out there. Have you some Man Time, too.